if you're able to go beyond that, like you're able to explain what you created, not how you created it, like what's the value it's giving to um, your stakeholders, that will be a big uh, milestone for you as a dev. Welcome to Hustle Share, the podcast that features the daily grinds of unique hustlers around the world to show not our differences, but that our hustles are very much alike. Now here's your host, Ronster Bay Pyong. Welcome to episode 32 of the Hustle Share podcast. My name is Ronster and I'm your host. And this episode is brought to you by Payroll Hero, a time attendance, scheduling, HR, and payroll solution for Philippine companies. If you are new to the show, we're glad to have you here. We're about to wrap up season one, and we're glad that you still got a chance to listen to this episode. But I'd like to give you a heads up because this podcast contains adult language, so make sure that there's no kids around when you're listening to this. Because today, we're going to be talking to a pirate. Not a pirate that you see in the seas, but a pirate that turned himself into a startup founder. And we're talking to Ellard Gaparel of AdMob. And today he's going to be sharing how he started out his career as a 16-year-old putting up his own startup because of his experience pirating DVDs and cracking games. He will also share how he was able to sell that company at a young age of just 17 years old that eventually paid for his whole college education. And next, he's also going to be talking about how he's hustled his way to become a very good developer for nine years in one of the most prestigious companies here in the Philippines. And the skills he learned that allowed him to develop his next startups after that. Then he will share how he came up with AdMob with the inspiration coming from his son. Before we begin this thing, Ellard is going to be super generous in telling us how to become a better developer, how to create good products, and how to be able to handle tough competition. So if you're ready to learn the hustle of a pirate turned startup founder, let's begin this episode right now. Welcome to the latest episode of the Hustle Share podcast. We are back. I got I just came out from the sickness, guys. I was down for a week, but I'm so happy that we got to do this again with one of my good friends. I've actually been wanting to have you on the show for for the longest time because we we shared a common bond with this guy with 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 my first startup. Uh, we shared the office. They were also he was also part of it. It was the CTO of Cloud Swift before, but now he's the CEO of AdMob. And welcome to the show, Mr. Ellard Caparal, correct? Did, did yes, I Caparal, that? Yes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ellard, welcome to the show. Yeah, uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm honored, actually. There you invited. go. Are you nervous? Like, you chill now? Uh, well, it's, it's my first time talking to a mic. I'm usually... <laughs> <to> <laughs> <a mic. laughs> I'm yeah. more used to talking to like crowds of people. Oh, I'm sorry if this doesn't pass your standards, <laughs> Mr. Elard. <laughs> okay, but again, this is this is very intimate, and again, it's just us, man. Just think yeah. of it like we're again we're in we're in the same fucking street that we were before. Yeah. You know, Jupiter. Jupiter is the place to be. And um, I'm recording just, in Jupiter. Yep. But let's just give a shout out to those people that fucking let us let this happen. The shout out to Kubo for letting us borrow uh, this this place again. So thank you, Cap. Thank you. Uh, Carlo and the rest of the Kubo team for letting this happen because you're also uh, in um, when they found out who it was like ah, okay no brainer <laughs> <laughs> because you're an incubate here yeah. as well okay before I blab too much and I get too carried away Ellard real quick what's your hustle yeah my hustle actually started um, very early in my life uh, back the when I was wow. a teenager <laughs> <laughs> well, what uh, did you that, do Ellard huh? well yeah. um, because I didn't grow up in, in like a good, well-off family. Okay. So, um, since the beginning, I was scraping off, trying to find ways to earn okay. uh, money. Okay. Um, so, back in my first um, hustle into trying to make money is um, back in college. Okay. Um, I was trying to sell like DVDs. Oh, um, shit, DVD! Of, of pirated oh, wow. movies. Oh, wow. And, um, porn, I, was it? No, no, no. no it's porn. okay if you do it again. I respect the hustle. <laughs> no, if you did sell porn, I don't mind. 
Uh, apparently, there wasn't that big of a market yet. Uh, <laughs> during that they time, they were still in VHS. They, they were still in focused DVD. on magazines. Oh, actually, wow. Okay. Because it's Old easier school. to hide uh, from yeah, their parents. And wipe after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then also PSP games during that oh, time. Oh, yeah. wow, wow. I got some free internet. Where did you study in college? Just I studied uh, in Asia Pacific College. Oh, wow. In okay. Magallanes, Makati. Oh, shoot. That's uh, the, the one here. that SM owns now, yeah. right? Wow. It's a partnership of SM and IBM. Wow, I didn't know this. Okay, that's awesome. So you studied as a what? Um, my course is a mix of uh, computer science, software engineering, and information technology. So it's wow. three courses in one. Uh, that's very interesting because again, this this is uh, another one of those episodes where similar to the Winston Demario uh, episode two episodes ago, um, he was a dev by default. Yeah, and then he figured out eventually how to be a hustler or a business guy and you have a similar story but i'm pretty sure it's fucking different <laughs> right because his was done in the states as a filipino migrant right yeah. he because he went there to again just listen to the whole episode i'm not going to say, say it but for you elder you, you 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 were doing this because to make ends meet you didn't have enough allowance or what that why were you doing this before uh, well, before, when I started, so when I went to college, mm -hmm. I initially got a, co a scholarship. So, ah, full paid scholarship nice. all the way. Full, but wow. um, in my first SEM, I failed uh, the values subject. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, that's very me too. By the way, this is just a little caveat. So, I understand your pain, my man. I graduated in my high school with an average conduct grade of 74. The oh. passing is 75. Yeah. <laughs> so the course that I wanted to take, I wasn't able to take that because I failed in my, my, my uh, what you want to call this? Uh, not the values, the whatever the fuck they call that, right? Yeah, that I failed. Like the ethics class. No, no, it's not just ethics. Uh, fuck, I forgot about it. But yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so you failed values. Why? Uh, it was because uh, I was not submitting uh, assignments. Basically, that's the reason. Okay. Because during that time, I was so involved with um, computers. Okay. Uh, actually, mobile phones in specific. So mm -hmm. it was the time that um, Symbian was coming out. Symbian. Okay. So I was very involved in that, uh, trying to find out because I was doing DVD burns, right? Right, right, Games right. of videos and uh, PSP games. Yeah. And uh, cracking of apps during that oh, time shoot. was wow, wow, a big okay. thing. So I was very active in the cracking so you, scene. Oh, thank you because I, before when I can I cannot afford a real CD yeah, of an NBA 2K whatever, <laughs> I'll get a crack. Yes. Yeah, okay. So you're one of those dudes. Yes. How long did you do that for and uh, what did you uh, learn from that hustle? So I did that like early on in college, um, but that's how I that's how I met my first um, angel investors. Oh wow! So you had investors back then. Yeah, wow, back okay. in college. So this was year two thousand. Wow. Yeah. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I was. No, like right now. Or now, uh, a lot of people don't know, but I'm turning 20, 36 this year. No way. Yeah. Sure, you look younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> At 22,000, th well, how old are you? Like 20 years old? Like, I was uh, 16. 16. Yeah, you so had investors. I got, because I got accelerated uh, when I was in grade school. Wow. So and that's why you got the full scholarship in the college. Yeah, that's why I got full scholarship. Got and it. I had, I was able to skip some classes in college, like math, programming. Oh, shoot. So wow. I had some free time during college. And that's what you did, <laughs> the cracking. <laughs> The so, whiz um, kid cracking yeah, so, them up. Uh, okay. in, the, in the story, so I lost my scholarship, right? Okay. And uh, since we were not from a well-off family, I had to work at Kenny Rogers in Mega Mall. No way. So I had to like clean up tables and so stuff. So you waited till you were a waiter? Yeah, I did that wow. for around three months, four months before I got Shit. fired. <laughs> oh, you got fired too? Yeah. Wow. It, it was hard because my class starts at 7 a.m. Then my shift ends at around 1, 2 a.m. Wow. So it was really hard, and that's where I learned that uh, in those kinds of work, it, it was really hard, and the, even though you exert a lot of effort, you yeah. don't get the same compensation. It doesn't Correct. go back it, to you, you're, right? You're, there's a cap. Yeah, there's a right. cap. Uh, so that's where I learned how to value the time, and okay. it just so happened that uh, before I got fired, like two weeks before I got fired, uh, two angel investors reached out to me on 
uh, something because I was very active on Symbian cracking scene. Wow. And there was a revolution happening. Were they the legit angel investors or are they shady ones? They were legit. So one of them was um, a big uh, ice plant owner in Nueva Ecija. How the hell did they know about Symbian? Uh, one of the guys was head of engineering in ABS-CBN. Oh my God. So they were doing some research about Symbian and they found my profile. So I was named Schizo during that time. Schizo! <laughs> I'm going to call you the hustle of Schizo. I'm just kidding. And uh, right. they reached out. From there, they um, pitched the idea. They wanted to meet me in person. Wow. Of course, I was sketchy at first because I was doing <laughs> uh, cracking stuff, right? Yeah. So I thought it was the uh, NBI trying to um, catch I'll me. crack you down. Yeah. Okay. And um, we, we talked and that's where we did the first startup. Okay, and what your first startup, and you were still in college back then, or yeah, you still, stopped? Yeah, uh, um, end of freshman year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, that's crazy. So, <laughs> your first startup was? I, it was called Edge.media. Edge.media. Yeah, so back okay. in the year 2000, uh, when you wanted something in your phone, it was the reign of Nokia. Phone. Yes, yes, yes. So, if you wanted something like a picture message, ringtone, you right. have to send a keyword to Globe or Smart yes, yes, uh, yes. special numbers. Poggy at Two, three, four, four. <laughs> <laughs> so and you get a pocky, um, whatever at the at, after back. What we created is it's actually the it's also the dot com um, boom, boom bubble boom, or whatever boom, it was. Yeah, it was, was the dot com boom. Right? And what we created was the first uh, web platform wherein if you wanted something, you just select it from the web. It gets directly sent to your phone and for free. Uh, it gets deducted from your uh, uh, load or it gets charged to your postpaid that's awesome. bill. That's the first. Um, and back the then, customization was key, like your background thing, your yeah, ringtone, even backlights, backlights, and yeah. whatnot. These, these were the things. So while doing this, you were doing college already. Yes. You're, you're, uh, so we had an apartment across the school. Oh wow! So if we didn't have class, we were programming Shoot. in the apartment, then going back to school. Or as a very young kid, how old are you when this this was happening? Seventeen, eighteen now? Turning seventeen. What the hell does a 17-year-old kid know <laughs> in terms... I mean, you, you're very talented. But I'm not trying to discount that. But managing a team, how, the, how difficult was that for you? So when they initially approached me, I knew that I, wasn't, I won't be able to uh, build it on my own. Okay. So I got three college um, friends okay. to join the startup. Okay. Uh, then we built the platform from there. So got it. Uh, it was easy from there. But are they managing you guys or you guys were doing I was the yourself? one managing the team. Shoot, that's because a 17 Because the, the ice plant owner had to stay in Mubai Okay. And uh, the director of uh, engineering in ABS had to work in ABS CBS. That is crazy. So they, at that very young age, they let you have all that power up for yeah, it would, well, I had a good reputation in the Nokia forums. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But how? what was the early challenges you had in that one? Uh, well, we actually was supposed to close it down oh. here in the Philippines because when we talked to Globe and Smart, and back then there was no cloud yet, right? Yeah. So when we talked to Globe and Smart, they wanted an 80-20 share, 80 in favor of them. All the time. Yeah, right. that's, that's a, any content or whatnot, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was that since it oh no no now it's it's the opposite they they, they get you you get the lion share yes they get, yeah. yeah but because back then they want the they want yeah correct okay so if they if they were to give us access to the system they had to get eighty percent share and okay. for us we did the math on the twenty percent. No. It wouldn't work because we had to buy servers. Internet was still very yeah, uh, yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. What we did was uh, we went to Singapore. Uh, it oh, was wow. um, Communication. Wow. It was uh, the event that we went to where um, we didn't have a booth. We were just attendees. Yeah. And we circled around. Right. Um, then we, we were pitching our product yeah, yeah. to the ones that had a booth. Okay. So we were reversing the process. Right, right. And that's where we got in touch with Singtel. Singtel. Yeah, Singtel. What? Okay, and then what happened? So when we pitched to Singtel, they, they liked it a lot. Then we, after a, a succeeding meetings, they asked us, do you want to pursue this as a company or do you want to sell the whole thing? Wow. And, and what did you choose? We sold the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you were, how long, how old were you? When this I, I just turned 17 during that time. Shit. What was I doing when I was 17? <laughs> a lot of stupid stuff, for sure. Yeah. But 17, you sold your first company to Singtel. Yes, to Singtel. Do you mind sharing how much? Uh, or ballpark figure? 
Uh, well, the the well, I know the the share I got. Yeah. Um, because uh, well, that's where I, I learned another lesson. Because okay. I only got fifteen percent of the company. No way! You yeah, were a slave. I was a slave because um, back then it was called industrial partner. Oh my where God. you because you only invested your knowledge and skills. They had to invest their financial capabilities. No, 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 no. The guys, whoever's listening to here now, if you have an idea space, it's not normal. Yeah, that's and not it's normal. Your, you have sweat equity. You have the idea, you do everything, and just because someone wants to fund you, you get minority. Yes. It should be the other way around. The, the, the angel or the first fund.